Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at problems involving static equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium, hey, everything is equal or balanced. And static, stuff is not moving, stuff is not rotating. So two conditions necessary for static equilibrium must be that the net force acting on the system is equal to zero, and if it's not rotating, the net torque acting on the system is equal to zero. We can have other problems involving equilibrium where these are both true uh, and the objects are moving at a constant velocity or rotating at a constant angular velocity. But specifically for static equilibrium, the things are not moving, not rotating at all. So here in this problem, we have a metal bar of mass M. Uh, it's attached to a wall with some sort of pivot right here. And then we have a wire that's also supporting the other end. Um, so with these problems, yes, our starting, starting point is net force is equal to zero, net torque is equal to zero. Since we're dealing with torque, uh, we're going to need to pick an axis of rotation. And my rule of thumb is generally I pick my axis of rotation to find the torques about uh, at the point of the, the application of the force I know the least about. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram for the forces acting on the bar, because that's what we're concerned about, not moving and not rotating. So we do have the weight of the bar going down here. We have our tension force in our wire going up along the wire. And we do have a, a force from the wall or a force from the pivot point. Um, it's going in uh, that direction. We're not 100% sure if it goes up or down or points straight in along the bar. We don't know what the vertical component of this wall force is. It really depends on the situation here. Uh, so we're just going to draw it at some random angle, and we can let the math tell us what direction that might be rotating uh, or might, might be pointing. Um, so bottom line is I don't know much about that force from the wall. Let's call it F sub W. And so I'm going to pick that as my axis of rotation about which I'm going to find the torques. And the nice thing about that is that it takes the torque from the wall force completely out of the problem. Uh, so what we have here uh, with the net force equaling zero, we're going to split this up into two and we're going to look at the net force in the x direction equals zero, the net force in the y direction equals zero. Uh, and then we're also going to look at the net torque equals zero. So this really breaks down into a three equations, three unknowns problem. So looking at the components of forces in the x direction, uh, we have a component from the wall force and we have a component from the tension force. And you can see right away, since those are the only two horizontal components, those must be equal and opposite. So we can go ahead and set those equal to each other. So T sub X has to equal FW sub X. Breaking that down slightly further, we can see that TX uh, is the side adjacent to that triangle right there. So we're going to have the tension force uh, times the cosine of theta uh, is equal to the X component from the wall force. Uh, we don't know what the tension force is necessarily, or maybe it was given in the problem. Maybe theta was given in the problem, and they want us to find the wall force. Okay, we found the x component of the wall force. Lovely. Uh, now for the y, let's see. We've got one component of tension that is going upwards like this. We have one component of the wall force. I don't know if it's going up or down. Um, I'm just going to assign it a... a a positive and let the math tell me if it's going up or down or maybe it's zero. So we can fill in uh, the y direction forces. We have the tension in the y direction. We have the wall component in the y direction and we have the weight going down. Uh, so we have Ty which is going to be T sine theta is uh, sorry plus Fw in the y direction is going to have to equal the weight of the bar. Um, so still we've got some unknowns in here. Uh, if T and theta are given, great, we can find the Y component of the wall force. If T is not given in the problem and one of the things we had to do was find T, we still don't have enough information at this point to find the tension in the wire. So this is where we have to bring in the net torque equaling zero and keeping in mind that we've defined our axis uh, right there where uh, at the 
point of application of the force we know the least about. It's important to remember, you can put the axis anywhere you want. You can find the torque about any axis you choose. Uh, I just find the rule of thumb, put that axis at the force you know the least about because it gets rid of it as a torque. So now then, we're looking at the net torque is equal to zero. There's no torque from the wall force because it's acting at the axis, uh, so we need the torque from everything else. Here's another really kind of interesting thing about these problems is sometimes, oftentimes, they don't give you the length of the bar, and that's because it cancels out. So we can define some arbitrary length for the bar L. So let's go ahead and do that, uh, and then we see that the mg force, the weight force, is acting at half L. Uh, so uh, let's see, that is causing a clockwise rotation, so let's go ahead and make that one negative, and then the torque from tension is going to be positive. The torque from tension is acting at a distance of L away from the axis of rotation. So first, the torque from tension. We have the magnitude of the force, T, times the distance from the axis, that's L, times the sine of the angle between them, that's given as theta. And then the torque from mg, that's minus, because it's clockwise, we have the magnitude of the force, mg, times the distance from the axis, that's L over 2, times the sine of the angle between them, and we can see right here, r vector, weight vector, 90 degree angle, sine of 90 is 1, so let's leave off the sine. And those are equal to 0. So putting mg L over 2 on the other side, we can see that the L's cancel out. So we have T L sine theta is equal to MGL over 2. Bye bye L. Now, hey, look, we've got an expression for T, granted uh, if theta is given. So T is going to be MG over 2 sine theta. So now we have an expression for T. We can go ahead and plug that in up here. And that's going to give us our expression for the X component of the wall force if they asked for it. And again, we can plug it in for the other equation there, and that'll give us the y component of the wall force if asked for. So, static equilibrium problems, your starting points, net force is equal to zero, net torque is equal to zero. For the torque, you need to fix an axis of rotation. I recommend making that action axis at the point of application of the force you know the least about. That's it for now.